Hello, thank you for tuning into this 2022 Election Candidate Forum for Thurston County Commissioner, District 3. This forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County in collaboration with Thurston Community Media. The League of Women Voters is proud to be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties at any level of government, but we are always working on vital issues of concern to our members and the public to defend our democracy and empower voters. I'm Allison Brooks from the League and I will be moderating this forum. Our timekeeper is Shelley Knipe. The candidates are Ty Menser and Vivian Eason. For this forum, each candidate will have the opportunity to answer a series of questions. The first question will be to the candidates in alphabetical order, and then will be alternated so that each has the chance to start first. Candidates will also have a chance to ask their opponent a question. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to questions. The timer will show when 15 seconds are left, and then will show a stop sign when time is up. If you don't notice the sign, I will tell you when your time is up. For the first question, I will begin with Vivian Eason. Question one, Vivian, what makes you the best candidate for this position? The best candidate for this position, I believe, is someone who can uh, serve all members of the community. I've worked for Thurston County since 1987 with the last 16 years serving an emergency management, doing public outreach, and dealing and working with the community one-on-one um, -on -one in neighborhoods. And I've learned over the years that everyone in the community wants to be a part of the community and they, they have ideas. And I want to give them more involvement in what goes on. And I also, I understand how the county runs. I've, my experience um, is, in the legal, the criminal justice system, and as I said, emergency management. And then I also spent 31 years in the Army Reserves and I uh, retired as a Master Sergeant. I've led a lot of people, I ran schoolhouses, so I'm um, very familiar with working with people and being a leader in our community. Thank you. Ty, what makes you the best candidate for this position? So I came to this position with a legal background and that was helpful, but you learn a ton about county government in four years in office. There's just so much complexity, so many different issues. No matter what issues you came in with an expertise on, there's always a whole range of other issues you never know anything about. So I've learned a lot and I wanna put that expertise back to work for the citizens in another four years. We've gotten a lot of work started on a number of key issues like housing and water quality and mental health systems. So I wanna keep going with that. I also bring a very collaborative approach. The county and cities weren't working very collaboratively when I came into office and I've repaired that. Um, I've built good relationships and uh, through across the different uh, areas of the county. And I think that's been reflected in the number of endorsements I've received from current elected officials in the cities. Um, and th that includes 20 of the 22 council members of Olympia, Lacey and Tumwater, three of the four South County mayors I worked with while I was in office, all the port commissioners, all the school board members. So I'm really proud and I hope folks will support me for one more term. Thank you both. For the second question, I will begin with Ty Menser. Question number two, what do you see as the board of county commissioners highest priorities? Highest priorities. Um, so, the county has some special roles vis-a-vis um, -vis city government. We, we play a special role in, as a board of health and our jurisdiction across health issues covers the cities. And of course, coming out of this health pandemic, that's a high priority to make sure we continue uh, to, to, to manage that appropriately. Um, a second area is with respect to land use issues. That's a special area. We have a Growth Management Act in Washington. It's really the counties that hold the line on urban sprawl, which is bad for climate, bad for uh, our economy, bad, it costs a lot of money when you have to provide infrastructure across the entire county. So we have to manage that through our urban growth areas and our joint plans with the cities. And then housing is a huge issue just across every jurisdiction. And so we work hard on that. I'd say those are the top. Few. Thank you. Vivian Eason, what do you see as the Board of County Commissioners' highest priorities? Highest priority should be public safety and ensuring that we have a safe community to live, work, and own businesses in. 
there is a lot of the crime rate is pretty high right now. People do not feel safe in their homes, even out in unincorporated Thurston County. We're seeing a lot of uh, high crime rate, a lot of theft, a lot of vehicle theft. And our Thurston County Sheriff's Department is the lowest funded in the state of Washington. And so we've got to make that more of a priority. Also, I believe in property rights with balance. I, I own property on 10 acres out in South Thurston County. I believe in balance. Um, I've been involved for years with the, the pocket go first stuff. And so I, that's when I mostly got involved. And then I also believe that all humans deserve a place to live. And the way we're handling the homeless right now, I believe that we could do better for them. And so we need to put more emphasis on ensuring a permanent solution to the homeless issues that we have. Thank you. For the third question, I will begin with Vivian. Question three, what do you see as the benefits and or drawbacks of Thurston County moving to a five member board of commissioners? I believe, well, the pro um, of that is that there, there could be some, some uh, discussion between the county commissioners. You wouldn't have to exactly have an open public meeting notice to discuss things. That can also be a drawback. I mean, you can have people making deals behind the scenes. I think you'd have to have some rules there. The, um, the con would be the cost. It's gonna cost about a half a million a year to add two more county commissioners. And it also, um, the initial layout of the mapping that I saw, it looked like it would be more city focused in about three of the districts, which would mean that we could have more city um, representation on the county commissioners versus the unincorporated Thurston County. So I think there would have to be a lot of discussion. I'm pretty neutral. I haven't decided how I'm going to vote, and that's what I tell people. I believe in what the people decide. Thank you. Ty, your turn. Um, I'm supportive of the, the five commissioners, and all three county commissioners are, as well as all three port commissioners, because they're also asking voters for the same, including the previous commissioners that just left office. So it's, it's unanimous across us, because when you've worked on a three-person board, you see how difficult it is not to be able to work in subcommittees, not to be able to work through issues. I mean, every council that we have in this county works on a, you know, where there's two council members can speak and work together on something. We can't, and that's debilitating. Stability is important. Losing, as I said about in my opening answer, you can lose two of your three commissioners in one election cycle with one person left that understands the complexity of this job. That's not good. I'm looking for deeper representation rather than broader. Um, I think, you know, if I'm to provide oversight over inner city transit, lot, JazzCom, uh, Orca, Clean Air Agency, all these agencies, I can do a better job if you give me four or five of those, not 12 or 14 of them. Commissioners are spread very thin. I think we can do our jobs better with five. Thank you. Thank you both. The fourth question goes first to Ty Menser. Question four. Ty, what is your opinion about the Growth Management Act and how would it affect decisions you make as county commissioner? Well, the Growth Management Act makes, controls a lot of our decisions because it's state law. So we don't really have uh, the opportunity to say we're not going to follow it. Um, I do believe the Growth Management Act is being looked at. Um, it, there are definitely adjustments that could be made, but at a fundamental concept, I support the concept that sprawl, and I mentioned this in a previous answer, when you have, um, you know, when you have urban sprawl, you spend a lot more money to provide services, law enforcement, fire, roads, you, um, you know, it, it's crime, you know, it, there are statistics that show that, you know, denser um, communities, crime is better, uh, there's better effects on climate change, it's you know, more environmentally, more sustainable. Um, so I think that's the idea of growth management. It certainly needs some adjustment because there are some, some, um, some fine points that are difficult to manage in land use issues for the county, but um, we're advocating for those. And I know the state legislature has a, the Ruckelhaus Commission that's looking at that, and we hope some good things come out of that. Thank you. Vivian, your turn. Do you need me to repeat the question or? No, I'm Fine. good. Okay. So the, the Growth Management Act is, is not the best for, for Thurston County. And I've talked to some of the state representatives and their goal it would be to put it back onto the county and take it out as a state requirement because we need more affordable housing, especially out in unincorporated Thurston County. A lot of us, um, 
we don't choose to live in the city. We choose to live in unincorporated Thurston County. And I know a lot of the planning that goes um, goes on is with hopes that people will will live in the city and use public transportation, et cetera. I have a small hobby farm, but we need to be able to um, work what works best for our county and not be regulated by the state. And under the the my goal, my thing is that it's local government controlling local government and the state has their purpose and then it's the same with less uh, federal uh, overreach also. And I think that's the plan of how cities, counties and states are set up. Thank you, thank you both. The fifth question goes first to Vivian Eason. Vivian, question five, what are your plans to address homelessness in Thurston County? You know, homelessness, um, I've discussed this with a lot of people and I've actually discussed it with prior homeless individuals that are very passionate about it. I've gone down and I have a, a person from high school that feeds the homeless on Saturdays. I've gone down there with her to feed them. They also don't feel safe. I believe that they, you know, they're, we're all human and they believe they um, deserve a place to live. And I think it should be more permanent housing and not moving them around just to get them out of sight. I believe that the homeless issue has become an industry. We're putting millions and millions of dollars into it without seeing a lot of change. And so I would like to see us do more to make it a permanent fix, do some affordable housing. Um, we have mental health, we have drug court. We need to get people into those programs that need those. And also a lot of people that are, we're serving are not from our area. They've come in just for services. So they are not from Thurston County. Thank you. Ty, what are your plans to reduce homelessness in Thurston County? Thank you for that question. Um, one minute, okay. Um, we, I believe that homelessness is really a function of forces at state and federal level that we're sort of left to manage at the local level without the resources to do it. Although we do have two new large funding sources that we've never had before, some, uh, one from the state uh, and a second was the countywide home fund that I helped um, put into place, which matched what Olympia had passed by voter initiative across the county, 0.1% sales tax, to address permanent supportive housing and it can up to 40% can go to mental health. That's going to triple the amount of resources available for permanent supportive housing. Permanent supportive housing is where you have case management requirements and services available along with the housing. It's critical uh, to have that to get people successful and out of the cycle of homelessness. So I think that's going to be a good investment for the community. A lot of public support for that. Um, a lot of polling data that we looked at from Challenge Seattle and Christine Gregoire's effort. And so we're hoping those two funding sources will help us do what we've never been able to do before on this issue. Thank you. The sixth question goes first to Ty Menser. Question six, Ty, reports are that Thurston County is one of three sites being considered for the siting of a major new airport. What are your views on this issue? So the community has spoken loud and clear on this. Uh, I, I've joked that I don't think there's, it's not a joke, I, there's not, I don't think there's been any issue on which commissioners have received such unanimous comment, sentiment, that they oppose this idea. First, the site was on my district on the west side of I-5, south of Black Lake. Now, the, the, the new proposal is a brand new site north of Tonino. So we're going to weigh in. The commissioners have agreed, and all three of us are united. We're going to weigh in in other ways, and we're going to try to collect all the leadership of the entire, all the different areas of the county, all the mayors, whatever it takes, to let this commission know loud and clear that Thurston County is opposed to this. And um, I think there's all kinds of reasons for that. but. Um, hopefully we can be heard where clearly we have not yet been heard because uh, we, we did oppose the first we were asked and we said no thank you after board discussion and community input now we're not being asked so we're going to try to force our voice into the mix thank you Vivian I also um, am not for an airport especially an international airport in Thurston County and everyone I've talked to I've done doorbell and everything people are opposed to that and they've actually been quite concerned at first I don't believe it was taken very seriously. I was at a county commissioner meeting and I think, I think the county commission thought it was a past subject and then it's popped up again. And I've, I've seen uh, JT Wilcox is, was talking about it on Facebook. So I believe that the state legislature also, we've got to work with them to push back on that. An airport belongs with a big city where there is 
of better transportation, better public transportation, it would destroy our our uh, unincorporated Thurston County. The traffic would be horrendous, and 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 we talk about uh, growth management. <laughs> I mean, it would destroy our unincorporated Thurston County. I mean, we all love the beauty of our county, and and it would it would destroy it. Thank you. Okay, Ty and Vivian, you now have an opportunity to ask your opponent a question. Uh, you'll have 30 seconds to develop your question and then the other candidate has one minute to answer. And so we will start with Vivian. Vivian, you can ask Ty the question of your choice. So I think Ty already knows my thoughts on, um, I, I, I encourage a lot of public input. And so I want to ask uh, Commissioner uh, Menzer, the, the home tax was passed without a vote of the people, and that's quite a large tax. And why was that decided to, to go forward without a vote of the people, even though Olympia did do a vote? Why was that done that way? And then why are we, um, in the same sense, why are we not communicating more with unincorporated Thurston County? Okay, Ty. Okay. Try to hit the home fund. So um, the home fund, Olympia had to because there wasn't an option for what's called a council manic decision and they passed it overwhelmingly. Then the legislature made that change because we were tr the homeless crisis was getting worse and worse and the idea was they wanted us to be able to act quickly in, the, in line with the, with the line's parameters of an emergency. Um, I was comfortable with it. I t you know, took the, the, the question very seriously, but we got, uh, we had, I mentioned Christine Gregoire had a challenge Seattle group that did statewide polling county by county. It showed, I think, 85% support for government action on, on, on homelessness at the local level. We also did a public hearing. We didn't have to do a public hearing before passing the home fund, but we did, and we got absolutely overwhelming support from the community. So with all of that, I felt comfortable that we could go forward and let the rest of the county match what Olympia had already passed by voter initiative, so, because we all recognize this is a regional issue that requires a regional solution. Thank you. And now you have the opportunity to ask your opponent, Vivian, a question. Okay. So I came up with this one. Um, okay. Okay. You, you mentioned, uh, you often mention Commissioner Edwards as one of your mentors. Yes. And in 2020, Commissioner Edwards made a motion to eliminate all building permits in Thurston County, including those related to health and safety. He did not get a second from Commissioner Hutchings or myself, and I'm wondering if you were on the Board of County Commissioners, would you have seconded his motion? Why or why not? I would not have seconded that motion just because I know that the county has to have revenue because it takes money to to do the permits and everything. I do believe that there should be a limit on what we're charging fees for. For instance, the HCP is coming in and it's going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars. For like, for me, if I, I have a parcel, if I wanted to build a home, it would probably cost me 10 or 15,000 for the um, take permit. And there is an RCW that says the county cannot charge fees for such building. And so I would have, I'm. I used to be a legal secretary. I would have to research everything. I'm not someone who's just going to go across the board and say, I'm going to do this. I would have to research it and see what the impacts would be to the people and to the county because I've worked for the county for so long and I know that we do have budget issues. But no, I would not have just arbitrarily said we're not going to charge any permits because we have to be able to charge permits for like septics and, you know, so that you have some that people are meeting requirements. Thank you, Ty Menser and Vivian Eason for participating in this forum. We thank TC Media for producing it. Expect to receive your ballot mid-October. Voting begins on October 21st, and your ballot must be mailed or placed in a ballot box by 8 p.m. on November 8th. You can register to vote online through October 31st at vote.wa.gov or in person until 8 p.m. at the Thurston County Auditor's Office on November 8th. We encourage our viewers to be a voter in the general election. Thank you for joining us today.